and welcome to the second episode of Battle Pirates Weekly Update. I'm going to start talking about the update notes that's going live tonight. Right now here for me is Tuesday, May 12, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And this is going live at midnight my time, so in about two hours. The key point about this update, of course, it's, it's going to bring all the new prizes and blueprints and stuff for the Inquisition Raid which starts running tomorrow, Wednesday, at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern time, and it's a rolling start based on the sector you are. There will be two TLCs for players catching up. If you're up to date, there's nothing here for you, but if you don't have a good defender fleet, you can get caught up with Gorgons and Carnages. For a long time, I used the Gorgons on my base. They're fairly decent. Uh, you can also get Beyond the Breach if you need to upgrade Breachers, for instance, those you got for free from Kicks. So you can get upgrade kits and upgrade tokens for those. If you're caught up, if you have, let's say, a fleet of Warhounds, you probably don't need this. But bug fixes, I just want to highlight one thing. Uh, people who are either intentionally or by accident exploiting the glitch of walls stacking, the composite walls stacking on top of each other, making it twice as hard for attackers to breach your walls when they're attacking your base. Uh, I suggest you fix that, check your base planner, because any buildings that are overlapping on top of each other, partially or completely, will be deleted with this update. Just in case Kixai makes a mistake, on that, I would suggest you go on your base planner, take a bunch of screenshots. So just in case the building gets accidentally deleted and you didn't have it overlapping, you can prove when you open a ticket with their support. So these are the key highlights of the update. After the update, one thing everyone should be aware of, there will be a downtime, planned maintenance. Uh, between 2 and 4 a.m. Pacific time on Wednesday. So if you're on the east coast of America, that is at 5 a.m. And I'll probably be sleeping at that time. But I believe our friends in Europe, players in Europe, this will be smack in the middle of your day. I would think about 9 hours, so probably 11 a.m. your time, depending on where you are in Europe. So it, it might affect your playtime. If you're planning on doing last rounds of Cry Havoc or anything like that, just be aware there will be a two hour long downtime on Wednesday, all right, before the raid starts. The four regular zealots, we're gonna get extra 200% survival for both damage types, and we're getting a drone. Haven't seen those in a while. It's called the Servitor drone, and we have some information here that it has 10 million armor points, some. Decent defense, 50-70%. Super duper fast turn speed. I don't know why it needs to be that fast. I guess we'll see the mechanic uh, once somebody upgrades it to X1 and records a video. And the problem is it has 40 combat speed, which is a lot lower than the fleet itself, being that a normal Zealot fleet runs at about 100 combat speed, meaning the drone will fall behind but it's not as bad because then you gotta look at this aura here that has a range of 89 so for as long as the drone is close to the fleet it will have twice as much speed so it goes from 40 to 80 again still slower than the fleet but not as bad now once you upgrade the flagship you get an extra aura and that one gives extra 200% drone speed, making your drones way faster than your actual Zealot fleet. So in that case, they should run ahead when you combine the two ores and you get 300% combat speed. Looking at the damage, uh, one single drone can deal 45 million damage. To give you guys an idea of how much that is, one Zealot deals about 10, 11 million damage per round, 10 million. Except it says here they have short range on their weapon. And I don't know what short range means. I'm assuming it's the same or less than the Zealots, but it doesn't say 
what the range here is anywhere. It doesn't. It also doesn't tell what the reload time is. But at least now we know the damage. We know it's a multi-shot corrosive weapon. And we know the ships will not lose health as they generate drones. So it doesn't negatively impact your repair time. It's actually a good thing. Templar on the Discord channel also said that these drones will be untargetable. The enemies will not fire at the drones. They'll fire at your ships, meaning the drones will be able to approach the enemies and fire at them, meaning this armor they have, which is not much, it's pretty much there to protect them from splash damage and from the, the, the red uh, circles from the Valkyrie that do penetrative damage. Every time a drone dies or falls behind out of the aura, a new one will spawn. So you should have drones throughout the battle. A final bit, it's the, the, the Vault Zalot X1 upgrade. Besides giving it resistance as well, more survival will double that damage, so that 45 million damage you see here, once you upgrade your flag to X1, it's going to be 90 million damage per drone. Again, that's insane amount of damage when you consider you can have up to four of those. Let's now talk about the raid, Inquisition. Uh, starts on Wednesday, as I said, it runs until Tuesday, May 19th. This raid is a little bit different than the others. It has a, an extra target. For players who could not get the Zealots ready to face the two new S targets and the new X target, there will be an X target for Punishers. Which... Looking at prizes now, brand new prize Corrosive Battery 2. It gives you extra 40% Corrosive damage versus 30% from the regular Corrosive Battery. Gives you 95% Building Wall damage versus 80 from the regular Corrosive Battery. And it gives you 3600 turret defense, which amounts to about 28% versus 14% from the regular corrosive battery. So any, any way you look at it is an improvement. You can get it from the raid and you can also get Zealot and Devout Zealot build tokens from the raid. So it's actually possible to redeem the battery, redeem a token, install it right away, ship by ship, and you should see an improvement right there. You don't need to wait to get all five. And you don't need to wait until after raid to get the, the refit done. The second prize, new prize, is the Mongoose Heavy Rocket Turret. This goes in your base, of course. It is a long range turret. When you look at the range 110 to 250, it's the same as the Hellmouth. If you have the Hellmouth Thrower, same range, but different angle. It adds the same amount of armor point and requires the same amount of power as far sights and hell mouth. So you can kind of now it adds to the family, right? You have the far sight, you have the hell mouth, and now you have the mongoose. They're, they all kind of go in the center of your base, pointing into the channel. They have a blind spot of 110. The far sight is 120, and it has a maximum range of 250. Two million damage. The the conquerors to keep in mind. I think a warhound has 36 million armor. This one does 2 million damage divided by 5, so it's 400 per projectile. But it has splash, it has spread, so that cuts it down a little bit, and your ship will have deflection and so on. So don't expect this turret to, to kill everything in one shot, but it's, it's going to take health from them. And the good thing is if the attacker is coming in stacked because of the splash, you're going to be hurting all 5 ships. The big downside of this turret, other than the blind spot under 110, it's a very slow projectile speed. So let's look at this graphically. Here, let's say the circle is the mongoose turret. It has a 60 degree angle, which at, at the end, maximum range of 250 is going to be approximately like this wide. It has a 110 of blind spot, so it won't fire when the ships get close to it. But if this is near your outpost, it's pretty much should be covering your whole channel. Uh, the 60 degree information is not anywhere in the blueprint, but I got that from CM Gilly on uh, Kickside's Discord server. Like I said, you have to address the slow projectile speed somehow. And I'd say the key special here is the escalation eruption pyre. Gives you more splash, a lot more reload, bringing the turret reload to about two seconds. And it gives you more projectile speed. The other two specials focus on stuff that gives you more damage, more splash, more projectile speed. There, there's like probably 
three or four choices for those two slots and depends on what you want. Focus on damage, focus on projectile speed, focus on reload, entirely up to you. There are some badges, I'm not going to spend much time here, except that to win this four of a kind, you got to complete that bonus set 10 times. And the bonus this time is a little bit more complicated than usual. So there are many ways of reading these set bonuses. At first I thought, you do the 508 and you get 500,000 bonus points plus the 500 for damage. And then I thought, okay, now you do the 600 with the Punisher and you get another 500. It doesn't work like that. Speaking with CM Geely on, and Templar on Discord, the way they explain this, you do the S set both targets. So you score 250K on one, 250K on the other, and then you get extra 500,000 points as a set bonus. So 1 million points here. Then if you do a 600, you get just 250k points, nothing more. But if then you do a 508, you get the 500k for the 508 and 500k. So you do these two, you gain extra 500. You do all four, you got the 500 here and you get the 500 here. So in total, the bonus you here you get for the sets is 1 million points. Now you won't get the bonus if you just do the 508 and the 600 without having these two S targets banked. You need all four to complete this 500k bonus set. And then you need just these two to get these 500k. It is confusing. And if it helps, this was just happening, this conversation was happening between uh, amongst a lot of players on Discord, and Gilly was explaining. So it's 500k for the X plus S and 500k for the S only, right? So when you hit all four, you get a million. You hit just the S, you get 500. And if you complete this complete set of four 10 times, you get the badge. People without the top ships, you can look down at the A targets, you can do with Punishers, the B targets, you can do with Pegasus, the C targets, you can do with Dragoons. New featured items in the price store. We talked about the corrosive battery. Here you can see it's 1.5 million. You can get five of them. The Mongoose is 5 million each. You can get three of them. Even though the limit on the blueprint is five, this raid you can only get three. You can get upgrade kits for your Zealots and your Zealot flag. Now, probably if you did the TLC two weeks ago, if you did pillage and if you did last raid, you already have more than enough kits to get all ships to X1. So pay attention to that. You probably, if you're caught up, you don't need any of those. You can just skip that. You have Zealot build tokens. You can get eight of them, so two per ship, which is more than enough to add weapons missing, armor missing, uh, change the battery for the new one once you get it. And you get four tokens to finish your flagship. Same for upgrades. There are four upgrade tokens for the regular Zealots and two for the flagship, which should help you get at least, for instance, one ship instantly from U1 to U2. Or you can get all four ships from U0 to U1. All right, then there's some VXP tokens. If your ships are not fully ranked, you may want to get some of these. And more gatekeepers. Everyone can have, I think, up to five gatekeepers and you can redeem up to three this raid. And then there's gonna be a whole bunch of other tokens and stuff on the raid, but these are just the highlights. That's it for this week. Uh, I hope you found this video useful. Please uh, hit a thumbs up on, on my channel if you liked it, subscribe. And I see you next week for another Battle Pirates update. Enjoy your raid, have a good time.